Peter's a modern woman who's complex and complicated and unpredictable. It's a series about what's moral, what's not moral, what's good, what's bad. Peter and Roy are two actors who each bring a distinctive atmosphere about them. We really created something that's a little different, that's unique. It dealt with a lot of things that were really happening out in the real world. developed a script for USA Network. They did not like the script. They still liked the idea, but the script was very much like the movie in that Nikita was like a street girl who was a criminal. So I came up with the idea of making her an innocent, a person who was accused of a crime that she didn't commit. I did it! I did it! I didn't kill it! We took that story from the original movie that Luc Besson did, but then we turned it into its own animal. And it's very strange when you consider that two movies had been made already of the same subject matter. You think, wow, how can you do it again? How can you do a television version of that? But I think what they did that was really successful in the show and what we did is that we made it our own. One of the things we tried to do was give Nikita a, a moral dilemma because she was essentially not a killer. She was not a secret agent. Well, they turned her into that, but by nature, she was a basically decent person. So that was always the tension in the show. How far will this decent person go to survive? And if she goes too far, will she be able to retain her own sense of, uh, of decency? They seem to think you have potential. We must have read about two to 300 women for the part of Nikita, and uh, Peter Wilson was like the second or third actress who actually came in, and she knocked us out. When I auditioned for it, it was a wonderful experience because I, I, of course I wanted the job, but I didn't really mind if I didn't get it, so I went and had a lot of fun in the audition, so I was really Nikita. I was very feisty and fiery, and she's serious, but in the audition I was a lot of spunk, so I put everything into it. Peter was perfect for this role because she has, at least she projects on screen, a genuine danger. She's very sexy and very vulnerable. And those things, to find them all in one person, one actress who can not only play them all, but go back and forth seamlessly uh, among those different feelings when she needs to, is rare. An unheard man sitting behind me has a PDA in his briefcase. Get it? If you don't mind. Leave. Roy Dupuy is a one of a kind. He was so distinctive as Michael, but it was an acquired taste. The first two episodes, nobody liked him. His accent was distracting. He spoke too low. He moved too slow. He didn't have any urgency. He didn't have the register of emotions we're used to seeing in a typical TV lead. But by the third episode you saw him, you realized this is the reason I'm watching the show. I didn't want to go into this super spy character that kills people and keeps a smile on his face. I felt that every time you kill people or you lose someone, uh, you die a little. So that's where this coldness came with the character. I felt him like as a line, as a economy of movement. He doesn't move for nothing. He doesn't talk for nothing. He's like, for me, the perfect operative. And uh, that was tough to do because it needed a lot of concentration. What gives you the right to talk to people like that? I'm in command, that's what. We read a lot of people for operations. He came in first, first or second day. We read people over the next couple weeks. And again, it was one of those things like PETA. When I first read him, he seemed good, but it was early in the process. Two or three weeks later, I realized, oh my God, this guy is clearly it. And this guy is in control of it. He can do whatever he wants. He can get away with anything. It was um, a challenge to play a guy like this, mainly because he was a guy who doesn't really show anything. The briefings that operations gave were a great challenge because we just figured have this guy 
explain to everybody there and therefore the audience what that week's episode was going to be about. And we used to labor and, and groan and moan over these speeches. I'm a real slow learner. It's real hard to concentrate sometimes and, you know, especially these long briefings and, you know, expository stuff. Poor Eugene had to, like, rush through it all the time. And I still to this day feel sorry for him because it became the, oh, let's just put that in a day. We can get through it really quick. An entrepreneur named Spidell has teamed with a young man, Stanley Shays, who claims to have created this new breakthrough material. Walter. I talked with Spidell. I heard his story. Don't believe it. Don Franks, who played Walter, came in to read for operations as well. And then as soon as we saw Don read for the part of operations, we said, Walter. We originally had envisioned him as a dirty old man until we saw what he was giving us. And he was one of the most warm, charming uh, characters. We immediately shifted gears and started giving him the man who has the experience and the wisdom in the heart. The moment shall be separated. We'll never see each other again. Understand that. Whoever talks first will go free. The other will never see the light of day. The Madeline character, originally, we had a little different take compared to where, where she ended up. I think we envisioned the Madeline character as being a compassionate mother figure. Alberta Watson gave us an unbelievably strong and almost ruthless feminine icon that we could use in, in ways that we hadn't originally planned. How'd you get like this book off? Like what? A cyber geek? Hey, technology's beautiful. You just haven't taken the time to appreciate it. Burkhoff was originally envisioned as the geek of Section 1. And he, I think, played most faithfully what we had written from day one. He had an originality to him. I mean, that part can be a fairly uh, cliche part, the computer hacker, the young kid wearing the T-shirt. Uh, he just seemed to go beyond it. He just seemed to be about so many other things than, than that, that we just said, this guy's so interesting, let's just do it. The very first shot we ever did on Nikita was Peter Wilson in the front of the limo, turning around, and she has a gun, and she, you know, actually smiles at them, which right away set her character. We hit a magic formula between Peter and Roy and Michael and Nikita. One of the first scenes we shot of them was them dancing together. And we looked at the dailies, I'll never forget Tobin Bell, who was playing the part of the villain. He came up to me after they were shooting the scene. He goes, those two people together, it's like music. It's like, it's like great music. It's like they're giving something to each other that just adds up to something really amazing. Get ready. We were able to walk right into the Warner's facility in Toronto and start making the show. On Nikita, uh, our main set was not even specified. We had no idea where in the world it was. But every week, they had to go somewhere in the world. So the challenge was to turn Toronto into China, Japan, on a very small syndicated show budget. We used to pay a lot of attention to her wardrobe and her hair and all that, trying to make it as stylish and, and uh, hip as possible. You see it in, in the way they dress. Peta and Lori, our costume designer, together really followed contemporary fashion. And uh, I know in the off-seasons, they would go to Italy, they'd go to Milan, they'd go to the runway shows. They would find out what was happening that minute. The character allows for all kinds of different things, and she's modern and futuristic and underground and European, and I think clothes are, are fun, and they should provoke something in you. The first time I went into Joel's office, I'd never met him before, and he says, how you doing? He goes, sit down, and he, and he, had, a, he had a CD player, and he goes, I want you to hear something, and he, he uh, pushed the play button, and it was Iggy Pop, uh, Lust for Life. He says, the spirit of our show, or the essence of our show, is somewhere in, in this track. What I wanted to try to do was to sort of have a hybrid sound between that Iggy Pop track that Joel played me and this sort of the, the hip-hop trance tracks Euro of, of the mid-90s. There was such strong writing on the show that it really warranted having some themes that actually lasted throughout the entire um, life of the series. We probably realized we had a hit about uh, 
halfway through the first season. We were seeing fan commentary on discussion boards and alt news groups. After a while, we started listening to what they were saying, things that they liked, things that they didn't like. The one of the more prominent ones was that some fans wanted Michael and Nikita to get together. And we always believed that if they did get together for an extended period of time, that the drama would be lost. The fans know the show better than Adele. If someone asks me a question about the show or any particular show and I sort of glaze over for a second, I say, well, that was show um, 403 when you, and, and, and I'm, I'm like, I can't believe the knowledge that they have. They're responding to something emotional and it, it's affected them in such a way that they feel the need to give back, just like I gave them a performance. writers and the, and the cast and the crew had accomplished something that was a little different, a little unique. Rocco Mateo's sets had a distinctive feel to it. Sean Callery's music had a distinctive feel to it. Our storytelling was sort of arrhythmic. It took a risk on the, the storylines. It, it took risks on relationships. The actors interacted with, with the crew in a very comfortable way. Uh, but they were excited. They were excited by the scripts and they were excited by what they were doing. And that excitement was contagious. We were well ahead of our time with a female character being A, the lead of a, of a television show and be as powerful as she was, you know, both physically and mentally. I'm gonna look back at this and be very proud of what I did with the material and the time I was given at this point in my life. And, you know, I play an action hero, but I'm just an actress. And I think I'm quite tough, but I'm not really.